one does not simply walk into Mordor. The land of shadow. Hey everybody, uh, in today's Shadowcast, we will be focusing on Sauron and why he chose Mordor uh, to make into his vast fortress in which to assault Middle-earth many times during the course of the Second and Third Ages of Middle-earth. Um, I want to delve into the mind of Sir Sauron and find out uh, what made this location so perfect for him to create his base of power, his seat of power in Middle-earth. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in and see where this lore video takes us today. Let's begin today's shadow cast with the origin of the name Mordor. It is derived from Sindrin, Mor meaning dark or black, and Dor meaning land. The vocalization of the word is meant to be drawn out, Mordor, Mordor. Of course, I can't say it that way all the time, so I usually say Mordor. But the name was given to this place long before Sauron chose it, likely because of the black ash and darkness that often overshadowed the inner plain around Mount Doom, caused by its many volcanic eruptions. It is believed that the land of Mordor was created by the evil works of Morgoth in the First Age. After the fall of the first Dark Lord, the destruction of Belerand, it is said that Shelob, the spawn of Ungoliant, fled into the east and settled into the mountain range along Mordor's western borders. Nearly a thousand years before Sauron chose Mordor as his own. She fed upon men, elves, and orcs, and any other creature foolish enough to become entangled in her webs. It is written that Shelob was the very first inhabitant of this land of shadow. It is not certain if any others lived in or traveled through Mordor before the coming of the Dark Lord. The plateau of Gogoroth was not hospitable to life. Even before Sauron's dark will infused the land with its deadly horror and decay. However, the lands south of Gorgoroth in Nern were made fertile by the runoff of ash from Mount Doom that fed the inland sea of Nernan. An enslaved population did live there during the reign of Sauron and worked the fields to provide food for his armies. But it is not known if the lands were inhabited before the Dark Lord claimed Mordor as his own. It is written that Sauron, fearing the rise of Numenor and the power of the elves, chose the land of Mordor to make into a vast fortress from which to assault his enemies in Middle-earth. In the last years of the first millennium of the Second Age, Sauron secretly settled in Mordor, slowly and surely drawing his plans against the West. So, why did Sauron choose this land of shadow and flame? There are many obvious reasons. The first being the two vast mountain ranges that encircled Mordor. The Ethelduath, meaning Mountains of Shadow, lay along its western border, and the arid Lithui, or the Ashen Mountains, marched along its northern fences. To the south, another mountain range lay, 
uh, that may have been an extension of the Ethel Dueth, though some have named that mountain range the Arid Glamhoth. However, that name is not canon. The geography of this land served several important purposes. These natural mountain walls around Mordor kept out the enemies of Sauron, while at the same time keeping his slaves fenced within. But most importantly, these mountains kept secret the plans of the Dark Lord. Where these two great mountain ranges met, there was an opening into Mordor. The dark Vale of Udun acted as a staging ground for Sauron to gather his armies for war. Here he could stockpile armories and house his armies to defend the primary entrance into the Land of Shadow. Eventually, the Moranon was built and the Black Gate, which guarded the entrance into the Dark Lord's realm. To the east, the land of Mordor was open, allowing the Easterlings and Southrons entrance into Mordor. Men of Khand, Harad, and Rhun, who had pledged allegiance to the Dark Lord, streamed into Mordor along the desolate eastern road in times of war. The plateau of Gorgoroth and the land surrounding Mount Doom were barren and broken. But to the south, between two mountain spurs, lay the land of Nern, whose fertile fields were farmed by countless slaves. This allowed Sauron to raise vast armies in the north and feed them with the bounty of the southern fields. This was another crucial element that made Mordor the perfect fastness for the Dark Lord's armies. The essential geography of Mordor was itself a fortress, making it the perfect location in Middle-earth to gather and feed armies in secret while staging an assault on its enemies. But in the end, it was not these things that ultimately drew Sauron to Mordor. For Sauron craved only one thing, power, the power to dominate all life in Middle-earth. His power as a Maya was great, but Sauron saw his master, Morgoth, and Anur, with vast powers defeated in the end because he squandered his strength, shaping the lands and its people to his will. It was Sauron's hope to create a talisman in which to place his power and magnify its strength. In so doing, the Dark Lord guarded against wasting or losing his power. In Mordor lay one of the works of Morgoth, Orodurin. Mountain of Fire. Within its crack of doom lay a fiery chasm where the Earth's most essential powers erupted to the surface. Harnessing this power in the form of a master ring allowed Sauron to grow into a vast and menacing power that could sway the hearts and minds of slaves and armies under his dominion. The very earth itself was blighted by the power of his malice. The dark tower was built upon a mountain spur and its smithies, armories, and dungeons were fed by the molten fire of Orodruin that ran like a river from Mount Doom to Baradur. Mount Doom was Sauron's greatest discovery in Middle-earth and it was its vast powers that drew him to Mordor. There can be no doubt that Sauron chose wisely in his selection of the Black Land to be his seat of power in Middle-earth. I did want to say that last night, uh, along with many of you, I did watch 
the first two episodes of the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power uh, TV series. Um, and I'll be honest with you, uh, there are things about it I liked and things about it I did not like. Uh, so for me, the jury's out yet on exactly what I think about it. I, um, you, you know, when you are, when you're reporting on and uh, discussing a new series or a, a TV movie uh, or a film that's coming out, um, you know, you report on it, you uh, uh, delve into trailers and images and rumors and talk about all of that and think about it. Uh, you begin to form sort of an idea in your mind about what it's going to be about, and what it's going to look like, and how the story is going to unfold. And then when you actually see it, it's different. You know, the same thing happened uh, on both the Lord of the Rings films and the uh, Hobbit films, which I uh, reviewed and looked at and studied uh, extensively before they came out. So when each of the films would finally come out, I'd look at it and be like, wow, that was, that was nice. I love this, but that wasn't what I expected. And, or this was abbreviated and that was sort of extended and can't understand why they made this choice or that choice. Uh, but as time goes on, uh, I begin to see the thing for what it is, not for what I had in my mind that it might be. And so then I began to enjoy it more. Um, I'm hoping the same thing is going to happen with this series. And, you know, uh, this, the story of the Second Age is a complicated story uh, that really isn't a story like the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit are stories. It's more of a history that has to be made into a story uh, that can be consumed by a large uh, audience that really knows not, many of whom know nothing about it other than the films uh, by Peter Jackson. So it's not unexpected for me to uh, uh, see that it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot different than those, than those are. Uh, anyway, um, if you want me to, I can make uh, a video, uh, like a breakdown video of the darker aspects of each of the episodes. If you do, uh, please mention it in the comments section below. Uh, and let me know if that's something you'd like me to do. Otherwise, I may just comment here and there on uh, the darker elements of the show. Um, I'm hope you know. It, it seems like, uh, like I said, it's a it's a lot of story to tell in only eight hours. So I'm not sure of how they're going to tell so much of it. I guess that's why it's going to go over multiple seasons. Uh, it seems like they were just starting to set up some of the issues around the. Uh, Forging of the Rings, which uh, was interesting to see how they uh, introduced that. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest lore video uh, where we explored Sauron's choice of Mordor, the land of shadow, uh, as his ultimate fortress in Middle-earth. Um, in my next lore video, uh, I want to take you guys along with me to Sauron's lesser fortress in the dark forest of Mirkwood. Um, so, until next time, where I hope to see you exploring the dark hills surrounding Dol Guldur.